Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple announced the first features that are coming to iOS 18 officially. These are not rumors or leaks, but Apple announced them on their website, and they'll be available in a few weeks to beta testers and developers, once Apple actually unveils them on June 10th at WWDC 2024. So let's go over them, just like last year, it's a few weeks before, and the first thing has to do with Magnifier. Magnifier will have a new reader mode, which will be added, and then Magnifier itself has detection mode. That will now be an action button action that you can more easily access directly from the button itself if you have an iPhone 15 series device, so it will just make that a little easier to open. Now, many of these features or all of them have to do with accessibility. The first one is pretty huge and it's eye tracking. This is something they showed on the website where you can actually track things with your eyes and it control the iPad altogether with your eyes directly and then use dwell controls to sort of select different things. So they showed this off on their website and showed exactly how it works. So you'd be able to just look at it, maybe things they've learned from the vision pro to sort of decide what you're looking looking at and then control it. This would be great for people with different disabilities, whether that's cerebral palsy or maybe paralysis or something along those lines where you can just use your eyes and navigate the entire device, both on iPhone and iPad without any additional hardware, just using the built-in camera. So that's similar to what we have now. So with those dwell controls, you could activate buttons, swipes, or gestures according to Apple. The next thing has to do with music. This is for people that are hard of hearing or deaf, and this is a new experience where it gives you music haptic feedback. So maybe you're listening to a song, and while you're actually listening to that song, it will give you haptic feedback that goes along with the song itself. That will be something you'll be able to enable in accessibility. So that's something that's a little bit different I hadn't thought of before. VoiceOver will have some updates here too. So we already have VoiceOver. So if we go back, go to accessibility, and then we go to VoiceOver. If you're using VoiceOver, they'll have some new voices. You'll also have a flexible voice rotor, so you can control that a little bit, along with custom voice control and customized VoiceOver keyboard shortcuts on Mac OS 15. So if you're using this, you want to use voiceover, you can practice with it and you'll just have additional controls to turn this on off and control different things within the operating system. We'll also have vocal shortcuts. This is something that could be really helpful if you're using speech and you want to create maybe a custom sound to trigger an action or perform a task. So you'll be able to do this by just maybe creating a sound that would open an application or open a task or just perform that. You'll also be able to use a typical speech, which will be recognized by the neural engine or use device machine learning to recognize user speech patterns. This sort of hints at what we'll get with Siri with AI updates so that you can customize exactly what you want to control just using your voice with whatever sound works best for you. So if you have difficulty saying a specific word or you just want to use a noise to open something specifically, you'll be able to do that. It was also designed for users with acquired or progressive conditions that affect speech, such as cerebral palsy, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or stroke. And again, like I said, this goes along with many of the rumored Siri updates, but these are things that Apple has confirmed officially. Something else I think is a little bit different is vehicle motion cue. So while you're in the car, this is something if we scroll down through the press release, we can see. If we scroll down, there's this sort of look of what haptic music could be like. But if we scroll down a little bit further, keep going. If maybe you're in a car and it senses that it will help sort of reduce motion sickness by moving these dots along the screen based off of the movements of the phone. Apple says that there will be a control in the control center to disable this if you choose, but these dots can really help with motion sickness overall in the car if you want to use your iPad or iPhone. So that's something a little bit different. And to go along with being in the car, CarPlay is going to get some updates. Now we've been waiting for this for quite some time, but it even gets accessibility style updates where it's gaining voice control, color filters, sound recognition, and that allows you to navigate and control CarPlay with just your voice. With sound recognition, Apple says that drivers or passengers who are deaf or hard of hearing can turn on those alerts just like you can on your iPhone. So if you're using sound recognition, you can use this to notify you of different sounds, whether a car's honking at you or something else is going on. So that's a great update.
They've also added updates for CarPlay that will help with colorblind users. So color filters will make it a little bit easier to see and additional visual accessibility features, including bold text and large text. So all of those will be customizable in CarPlay. So maybe we'll get some other visual changes to go along with that. Now, Apple didn't show it visually in their press release, but there's a new hover type option that's coming that will show larger text when typing in a text field. You'll also be able to select the font and color you see as well to go along with that. And you'll also have some options with a visual trackpad. So if you're using assistive touch, maybe you're using that already, you'll now have the option to have a trackpad. You can move around the screen and resize. So you could designate a small part of the screen to actually use that if you wanted to do that in the future. Last year, Apple added a new feature called personal voice. So maybe you have difficulty pronouncing different words or different things, or maybe you're losing your voice altogether. You can then record something like your voice and then type it out as far as what you want to say. So if we go back and we use this in combination with live speech and I triple click the power sleep wake button, it pops up and then I can say something like, hello, turn that up, try it again. Hello. This is Aaron. This is Aaron. So it sort of mimics your voice and then you can just type that out. Well, if you had difficulty setting this up before they're making some changes to this. So what they'll do is now allow you to, instead of read full sentences, you'll be able to use shortened phrases to set up a personal voice. They're also adding support for Mandarin Chinese with personal voice. Live speech, Apple is adding categories and simultaneous compatibility with live captions. So we have favorite phrases now, but they're going to add those additional features here. If you're using voice control, there'll be some new options for complex words and vocabularies with custom support. So that's something coming soon. And again, friend of the channel, Colin Hughes actually messaged me directly and said he suggested some of these changes. He actually uses many of these features and communicates with not myself only, but other people such as I believe nine to five Mac Mac rumors and is a true accessibility user that really benefits from these. So he was very excited to hear all of these coming to the iPhone and iPad. Now, also if you're blind or you need to use braille, you know, there'll be some new ways to start and stay in the braille screen input. So if you're using that and you're visually impaired or blind, you'll be able to do that. And you'll also have options for multi-line braille with dot pad, the option to choose different input and output tables and support for the Japanese language is also being added for braille. Additionally, there's some updates for switch control. So if you're using switch control, which I haven't used it a whole lot, but it is here. If you're using switch control, you'll be able to enable the option to use the camera on both the iPhone and iPad to recognize finger tap gestures as switches. So maybe you just tap the camera and it recognizes that gesture. So all of those things are coming to iOS 18, according to Apple. There's some updates also that are coming for vision OS 2.0, but you can see the full press release here from Apple in their newsroom. So we know that these are confirmed that are coming later. We've also heard some updates that we expect for AirPods, maybe being used as sort of hearing aid style devices that aren't official. And you'll see here's some different things with the magnifier that I was mentioning lots of different things to go along with this. Now, if you have an Apple vision pro and you're an accessibility user, they're adding system wide live captions. So if you want to use those, those will be in vision OS 2.0 or whatever the next big version is that they release at WWDC. We'll also have the option to move captions when you're in immersive video, just by grabbing the little bar at the bottom. And they're adding support for made for iPhone hearing devices and cochlear hearing processors. They're adding reduced transparency, smart invert and dim flashing light. So many of the features we already have, they're just adding to vision OS as it seems like it's not yet finished. So it looks like it will be more of a refinement update this year for this device. In addition to what I've mentioned already at the bottom of the press release, it says celebrate global acceptability awareness day with Apple. And it says throughout the month of May, select Apple store locations will host free sessions to help customers explore and discover accessibility features that are built into the products they love. So it goes over different locations and things they're doing. We also have some new shortcuts or a shortcut they've created, which adds calming sound. So if you tap on this, you can add the shortcut. I've already added it, but you can go into it. We'll just replace it so I can show you and you'll see it here. So go into a calming sound and then maybe play rain. There you go and it's playing rain. So if you just need something, it will play that. Of course we do have sounds built in anyway, but it's just a quick shortcut into that. If we go back here, you'll also have updates in the app store. 
Apple TV app, Apple Books, Apple Fitness Plus, and Apple Support talking about all the different accessibility features. And that's one thing that I really do appreciate about Apple is really listening to different customers, listening to accessibility users needs and trying to help them the best they can. So it's great to see these features coming to iOS 18. Now there will be many more features with iOS 18, as it's said to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest updates ever. So those things we know officially are coming. We expect AI integration with Siri and different apps and much, much more. But as we know more about that, of course, I'll be sure to mention it in different videos. Now, if you're an accessibility user, or maybe you just like to use some of of those different features, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'll also link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.